and to have everything completed. I have students come into my office the last, last minute, at the beginning of the semester, and they turn in their paperwork, and then they're complaining to me relentlessly about how their financial aid paperwork is not completed, how their files are not done, and they're not receiving their Pell Grant money. Like I say, if you wait till the last minute, you're not going to like the results. <coughs> Reading, as my friend Steve and co-worker who works here at Main Campus says, is the key to successful FAFSA completion. If you read completely, you're going to eliminate 99% of the problems that you will see. Sounds simple, I know, but if you're like me, you hate reading. It's, it's a task, but it's well worth it in the end. Steve also says, follow the instructions. This goes back to reading completely. If you follow these instructions, you're going to have a much better result at the end of the day. There is the Educational Opportunity Center, the EOC as we call it. They are an office that is designated to help students with the filing of the FAFSA. I use it myself. I think it's a lot easier and I'd rather have it done and get it done right than to mess something up and not get it done. Another thing to do is be truthful on this. I have a lot of students that will not fill in something because they're trying to get away with it or they'll just outright, outright lie. My buddy Steve once again was telling me a story of a nursing student who came in, did not fill out the form completely, left out that she was a bachelor's, she had a bachelor's degree. You could not receive Pell Grant with a bachelor's degree. A year later, the system caught up with her. She owed $5,500 and was crying at his office. You don't mess with the federal government. They're going to find out. They're going to get their money back. Okay. So we've talked about reading and following instructions. Now we're going to shift gears into the waiting period. Yes, I know. We're going to have to wait. Nobody likes to wait, but it's got to be done. Persistence without pestering. Because we filed everything early, we're going to wait 30 days now to give the office a chance to complete all their paperwork. For every student that comes in there and asks or calls about their file, that's time they're taking off of those employees from working on their file and other files. Now if you multiply that one student by all the other students that filled out FAFSA, that's a lot of waiting, a lot of extra time added on. While we're waiting these 30 days, we need to get some paperwork gathered because there's a good chance you're going to get flagged for evaluation by the Department of Education. We're going to get tax transcripts, which is new for this semester, for the school year of 2012-2013. They no longer take tax records you have to have the official IRS tax, tax transcripts signed by every person that is filed. Also, we're going to get any kind of income that you receive through the state assistance, such as food stamps, Medicare, even help from friends or family. You want to have everything documented in case it's asked while we're waiting so it's prepared and ready to go. Okay, so we've waited 30 days. Nothing is seen on Spyglass. What's Spyglass? Spyglass is a very important tool that all of us need to learn how to use. It helps us schedule for classes, drop classes, see any uh, holds we have on our accounts, and it shows us our financial aid awards. We log into our Spyglass and see our financial aid awards. We don't have anything. Then we can call and explain to the person at financial aid that we've waited 30 days and we'd like to see our status, and maybe something's not right. Okay, you have followed my advice. You won! You got your money. Now it's time to party, right? Wrong. Wrong. <laughs> this is a contract. This is something that the federal government expects you to do to keep this money and to keep you from not having to pay it back. You must have good grades. 
you have to maintain a 2.0 grade point average. You fall below that, you're going to go into a suspension or warning status. You have to com have a 67% completion rate, meaning you have to pass with the C or better 67% of the classes that you register for and take. And that includes withdrawals, that includes being dropped. Unless you drop with, a, with, drop with pay, you will be charged as an attempt on those classes. It's very important. If you keep this in mind as a contract, as a job, you're going to benefit from this much more than if you just think this is free money for you and you can do whatever you want. We've learned that the Pell Grant is not free. We've learned what we need to do to maintain it. But not everybody can maintain these grades. Some things happen. It happens. What happens when we fall from grades? It's called an appeal process. You use the same critical steps that I talked about in the beginning, reading and following instructions. Following instructions on the appeal packet might even be more important than on the financial aid packet because they use how you follow the instructions as part of the guidelines to whether you get passed on this appeal or not. After you do the appeal, once again you check your spy glass and you'll see if you've been awarded your Pell Grant or they'll mail you through snail mail whether you've won the appeal or not. We have taken a journey to the center of financial aid, Pell Grant. Reading is key. I can't stress that enough. It's a pain, it's arduous, but it, it's what needs to be done. If you do everything in a timely manner, follow the instructions, you're going to be a lot less stressed out. You're going to be a lot happier with the end results. Keep your grades up. Don't withdraw. Don't withdraw and do your appeals. Approach this as a contract and uh, not an entitlement and you'll be happy. Thank you.